We've now heard a great deal about the elusive ISI, the infamous Pakistani Inter-Services Intelligence Agency. There are some reports that there may be a connection between elements in the ISI and the Mumbai terrorists. Today, I've had a rare chance to get an inside glimpse, an exclusive interview with General Hamid Gul, the former head of the ISI. I should warn you, some of his views are shocking. On 9-11 in particular, he says some things that I, for one, think are absolutely wrong and thoroughly discredited. But I thought it was important that you hear them, given the position he has held. Uh, General Gul, you know that uh, the United States has given four names to the United Nations of ISI officers whom it would like to place on an international terrorist list. You are one of those four uh, names. What's your reaction to that? I think this is a frame up, a total frame up. I have, I have a moral voice and I raise that. I have a position which I express freely, openly, I'm like an open book. This is preposterous, this is wrong, this is fallacious. And if my government does not... What are the charges me, against you? They, what the are the charges are against you? I am you? Uh, helping the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. And but this is so generalized. And particularly there is a mention of Sirajuddin Haqqani, whom I have never seen in my life. I don't know who he is. I knew his father, Jalaluddin Haqqani, way back when I was DJ ISI. But that's been a long time ago. I have nothing to do. I have no means to, to, to help them. But, of course, my position is that Americans have aggressed in Afghanistan and whoever is resisting, the resistance there is justifiable. So that is my position. I will maintain that position. If that uh, becomes the basis of uh, dubbing me as terrorist, then uh, I, I would say okay, it's all right. But other than that, to say that I'm practically involved in any kind of help, absolutely wrong. I am not that at all. Uh, General Gul, when you read about this, uh, this, these attacks in Mumbai, uh, and you see, uh, and and you re when you read about the attacks in Mumbai, this is a three-stage amphibious assault in which the boats were commandeered, the 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 captain and crew then killed. They maintained radio silence. Uh, they uh, uh, split up into pairs. They know their locations. They, they, they'd make a few false uh, targets to draw the first responders there. This seems like a military operation. Isn't, isn't it likely that there was some special forces or intelligence assistance given to these attackers? Indeed. I, I think that this was a very sophisticated operation. There is no doubt about it. It has rocked the... And I have all my sympathies for India. It has rocked this... Uh, huge country uh, for 72 hours and uh, they really don't know how to react and respond to this. But uh, when you look at the full spectrum of possibilities, who could have done it, then uh, one knows that Samjhauta Express was a similar case in which Pakistan ISI was accused, but it turned out that it was the militant Hindus themselves who had uh, killed 68 uh, passengers in that train and that it was an inside job. Now Colonel Sirikant Prohat, who is a serving army officer, he has been uh, caught in this particular case and uh, the, the whole thing has turned around. So uh, the, obviously there is an inside job. If it turns out, as w the one surviving terrorist says, that these people were trained in Pakistan in four separate locations, uh, do you think it would be retired I I ISI people? Do, who would be training the, these, these groups? Not necessarily. It is a question of motivation only. If uh, somebody is motivated and is because what kind of weapons it, did they use? That's very important. They used the clash and calls, they used the hand grenades, and uh, this, is, uh, this doesn't require a great deal of training. And uh, uh, of course, uh, these weapons are also available in the open market. Uh, if the evidence is there, then I am one of the people who would say, yes, India really has been done a great deal of wrong. We have said, and Pakistan government policy has been very clearly enunciated, that we will punish them, bring the evidence, we will take them to task. But so far, no bodies have been shown, no faces have been shown. And this man has not also been brought before the cameras. They, I think the evidence has to be, because you cannot, on the basis of accusation alone, 
start taking actions which can unleash uh, historical kind of changes. I mean, this would be a watershed in the relationship between India and Pakistan, and we have to be very careful about it. Uh, but are you confident that the ISI does not have uh, links, formal or informal, with lashkar e -Taiba? I have no linkages with them, but I do understand the character of an organization. It's a highly disciplined organization, unlike the other organization, where political appointees can be infiltrated. In the ISI, it's only the uniformed personnel who come and serve for two to three years, and then they revert back to their parent services. So they are bread and butter, their career advancement, their promotion chances, they all lie with the three armed services, that is Navy, Army and the Air Force. So uh, if there is one organization, intelligence organization, which would remain absolutely on the line, that would be the ISI. Unless you say that, okay, the Army is behind it, Pakistan government's policy is this, ISI cannot do a maverick job like this. I, it is uh, unbelievable. Uh, the president of Pakistan, Mr. Zardari, the day after the, uh, the attack, said that he would send the head of the ISI to India to cooperate. Uh, the next day it was revealed that effectively the army chief of staff had overruled him. Uh, is that appropriate for the, ele the elected head of state to be overruled by the, the head of the army? So I think it was a good thing that they withdrew this decision. And besides, sending the DJ ISI is something totally, uh, Indians should not have demanded this, and Pakistan should not have accepted to send him, because it was only an acquisition at that time, and it was not question of cooperation, it was question of interrogating, summoning him, in fact, the word summon was used, and uh, that was an affront to the national honor of Pakistan and that of the Pakistan Armed Forces. Do you think uh, we should be thinking of Al-Qaeda as a terrorist group? I know that there was a, there was a conference in, in uh, January 2001, which you attended, at which you felt that uh, bin Laden was better described as a religious warrior and should not actually be thought of as a terrorist. No, we said unless the evidence is brought up out against him, then he is not a terrorist. It's wrong. And even 9-11's full evidence is still not emerged. It is still shrouded in mystery. And a lot of people have a lot of misgivings about that. Uh, and, and it's not only me. I think a lot of people in America would be thinking the same way. There are scientists, there are scholars who have written articles on it. So I think to dub a man as terrorist, because I know I heard him twice say uh, on radio or something like that, and I think it was Osama, uh, not only that, but Mullah Omar also said that he did not believe that Osama had carried out that act. So that is still a mystery and it needs to be resolved. Americans have still to set up a proper commission, uh, inquiry commission into this event. I think that's very important. and. I think uh, President-designate Obama would do well to set up an inquiry commission into this. What is your hunch uh, as to who did, uh, who perpetrated the 9-11 attacks? Well, uh, I have been on record and I said it is the Zionists with the new cons. They have done it. It was the inside job and they wanted to go on the world conquest. They were looking upon it as an opportunity window when the Muslim world was lying prostrate Russia was nowhere in sight, China was still not an economic giant that it has turned out to be, and they thought that this was a good time to go and uh, uh, fill those strategic areas uh, which are still lying without any American presence, and of course to control the energy tap of the world. Presently it is the Middle East, and in future it is going to be Central Asia. So there are many, many theories. And uh, of course, but 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 uh, what you think? But you think? But you think who were That's the? That's what I also think. Who yes. was at the heart of? Who do you think was at the heart of plotting 9/11? Uh, at the, it's very difficult, really. I I wouldn't point my finger at it, but I think it was planned in America, and uh, at least one knows that it was done in Germany, uh, as far as the uh, reports go. But I think the heart of planning was inside America because the job was done there, but not a single person so far has been 
captured, caught, interrogated inside America, even though this entire episode took place there.